Okay, so welcome back to Switch Corner. Today we're going to be taking a look at the takeover on the Nintendo Switch. This 2D side-scrolling brawler, can it do its influences justice or are you better off sticking with Streets of Rage 4 and just playing it on repeat? Well, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and let's get started. So story and I'm keeping this brief because you don't come to this game for story, you should know that coming into this review. It's simply an idea though, Megan Brooks and Ethan Rivers daughter gets kidnapped and you're both out to save her alongside Connor Grayson. Presented as like shortcut scenes between levels, it's entertaining enough as it somehow manages to turn this simplistic idea into one big excuse to travel to all sorts of unique locations from the city streets, boats, beaches and factories. In game then expect the occasional one-liner as well here and there that just adds kind of like a little personality to our cast. Now is it winning any awards? Definitely not, but it is giving you an excuse to fight and that's really all you need. So gameplay and it's very much not ashamed of its Streets of Rage and Final Fight influences, while I will say still adding its own spin on things. The fight system's actually pretty deep, giving us dedicated punch, kick, special and jump inputs. The design here, it's, it's built around the idea of combos as you link these punches and kicks together for devastating damage as you keep your combo up or just simply juggle them in the air. Build up enough of a combo though and you'll be filling two meters, one by the name of Super and the other Red. Rage. Supers lifted straight from Streets of Rage with an airstrike taking place around you. Rage then though you basically become invincible, automatically blocking any damage while dealing extra damage yourself. Perhaps most interesting with the combat here though it's the idea of a sidearm. Ethan with his pistol, Megan with a revolver and Connor with his shotgun. While ammo I will say is limited for these weapons they will become part of your strategy, especially as you work up to the seven bosses you'll be facing. Now as with any game in the genre then expect a ton of pickups from food that's obviously going to heal you to cash to add points to of course weapons to leverage think samurai swords think crowbars it's channeling its influences no doubt and what a job it's done because the controls here and the combat in general feels fantastic super smooth and just makes you feel like an utter badass especially when you factor in each of these heroes feels very different while meeting the usual tropes of you know the all-rounder the fast and then the heavy. No matter the strength you choose though, the character expect to be using them to work your way through 7 levels made up of 20 unique locations. This thing even runs at a solid 60 FPS and maybe there's the occasional moment where it throws very slightly but I'm talking maybe 3 times through the entire experience and it was for maybe a split second. The real surprise with the takeover for me though, two levels that completely break the mold. One where you drive and shoot enemy vehicles and then a fighter jet level where you take out enemy crafts. While the driving was my favourite personally, I gotta say they were entertaining and surprisingly they worked really well alongside the rest of the gameplay here and you can see a lot of attention went into both areas. And that's really it for gameplay, a 3 hour or so brawler experience and yeah it's short but that's typical of the genre so you can't complain because I will give it credit here, it gives you many reasons to come back. First up there's a fourth character who was probably my favourite that you'll actually unlock following your first completion. Then there's a relay mode so you can freely switch between characters as you progress. This shouldn't have been an unlock honestly and they should have just included that from the very beginning. I had to keep on quitting out every time I wanted to change up my character. That got really annoying quickly. There's three difficulty modes though, there's challenge mode which adds like criteria you must meet, survival mode which is just that, survive as long as you can, local co-op and then even like high scores. Problems? Sure, there's a few minor ones. I mentioned local co-op but you should have guessed by now there's no online co-op which kind of sucks. Would have been nice to have had options in here for just that. Then the whole like limiting you to two players when there's four characters love to have seen that expanded as well. Enemies then they get a little repetitive in their movesets would have been nice to have seen a few more types of opposition and then occasionally it can feel a little cheap with its hits on you like explosions that seem to get you from a distance or boss encounters where they hit you immediately and there's just nothing you could have honestly done. I want to stress though these problems are very rare and that's really about it honestly. This is a solid throwback and it does its influences proud on a gameplay front. So graphically speaking, I'll be honest, going in I was 
entirely unsure. I can tell you now those screenshots simply do not do this one justice. While it's no doubt got its similarities to Raging Justice, I prefer the overall design of this one. They're using the 3D look that so often looks like claymation, but they add so much like heavy shadow and stuff, it almost gives that comic-like style to the game. In the opening moments, it pans across like this Mustang in a stunning gold, and I immediately knew I was in for a treat. Animations then for our core heroes, and they look solid, each bringing a different set of attacks and animations to the table from Ethan's brawler chops to Megan's acrobatic style to Connor who I swear may be a distant relative of Sangeef from Street Fighter based on his moveset because he's chopping and double kicking his opponents into oblivion. My only issue with the animation here it gives an almost like choppy feeling to it all it works but it's weird feeling how like smooth it all plays but visually it's almost like stop motion style like jumps frames on purpose. It's a stylistic choice along with the visuals and I'll say now it won't be for everyone. So most impressively in this one though, sure we get a few bland and stereotypical environments but they are easily outweighed by the creative and just downright stunning from the opening silly streets to the beaches to the 3D levels like when you're flying through the sky in the fighter jet. The locations are just incredibly well crafted and match the tonality of the game perfectly. Enemy animations then and they match our heroes in their design levels but I gotta point out the, the earth shattering when they fall to the floor after a hit, it's a small thing but it's honestly so cool no matter how simple that is it just shows how strong you are if i had any complaints with this one visually more enemy design as i mentioned in gameplay because that also gets repetitive on a visual front too and then the cutscenes telling the story that's a problem i weren't a big fan they're in like this comic book vibe but it kind of looks a little cheap in comparison to the rest of the package Fortunately though, like the takeover has it where it counts for visuals and that is in the core experience. So audio then and it's decent. First up the music is great and it's composed by a team of legends including some who worked on Streets of Rage. Story moments then and while it's no script of the year it's fully phrase acted and goes a long way in giving our heroes the personality that's you know so easy to miss in a game like this one. Then this personality can also be heard throughout the, the combat in the game itself because they're going to be dropping like one-liners and it just adds a little like layer of sense of humor. Now when it comes to attacks then it's nice and heavy with its effects which is exactly what you want whether it's the punches and kicks landing or the weight of a body hitting the floor or just like explosions going on around you. There's not much else honestly here but what more could you really ask for? The only complaint I have with audio and it's like a lot of my issues a tiny one but the face acting for enemies as you defeat them you know the groans or the screams and all that they get a little repetitive and grating by the end game and I wish I could have just turned them off. So overall the takeover was the best kind of surprise, not only does it achieve its aim of matching you know, the classics of this genre, but it does just enough to separate itself and kind of stand out as very much its own creation. With a fantastic fighting system, decent amount of content, 60 frames per second action, visuals that Sure, they're an acquired taste, but I thought they were actually stunning. And then the soundtrack, just top quality stuff. The few minor issues, they just can't ruin this experience. And the main one, the one I'd truly like to see change, would simply be to add some online functionality. Today though, I'm going to be giving the takeover a great 8 out of 10. Coming in price just under that of Streets of Rage 4, I urge fans of that series, or any 2D brawler in fact, to take a good hard look at this one, then look at your credit card, and then maybe consider introducing them to each other. Thanks for watching today, is this one you're going to be adding to your collection, or what do you think of this visual style? I feel like it's a love it or hate it with no middle ground kind of style. With that though, if you're new here and love the Switch as much as we all do, as always, hit that subscribe button, join us for the ride each week with reviews and deals. I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.